We also had a breakout session earlier we wanted to report back on. How many of you have at least one RV in your camp? <laughs> the all hands raised, basically. Not all, but that was 90%. So there was a breakout session on the topic of how to polish the turd <laughs> of RV walls and containers. And we felt like this was a good one just to report back on because it really is relevant, as we saw for most of us in our camps. Um, and how many of you feel like when you're walking down the streets of Black Rock City lately, there's just a lot of streets that are that, more or less that. And we want to change that. That's us, right? We are the ones who can change that. So Candy Ass is going to come up here and share some personal thoughts on this and also some of the things that came out of that breakout session. So give a round of applause. Hi, everybody. Um, I really wanted this to be part of the uh, content at uh, Symposium this year, uh, mainly because my camp is part of the problem too. And I don't need anybody to spank me for it. I really want to find a solution. And what I realize is it, there's, it, this is almost a call to action because I can't figure it out on my own. There's going to be somebody that comes up with some great idea. And actually, this is great content to be adding to all these different ideas and suggestions to our resource guide. Um, I wanted to share with you a little bit of uh, what happened and the polishing of the turret. And yes, I named it too. Uh, uh, it was a great breakout session and more of a think tank. Um, and uh, let's see, topic points. Um, how do you make something ugly useful? Um, There's so many amazing things, like some, some camps that uh, have huge vinyls, vinyl uh, art murals that have the 10 principles, like just simple things. Um, uh, an another camp, Disorient, woo woo. Uh, they don't line their camp with the RVs. They're like these circles, circumvents inside of the camp that are like spokes on a wheel. Uh, which I thought was really interesting. Um, but what do we do uh, to pull eyes away from what, what you don't want people to focus on? Uh, and taking into consideration what you do do, um, the optics that it's, um, it goes from day to night. So how do we light it so we don't have these dark walls? Um, because safety is important too. Um, and creating things that feel welcome. Uh, you know, if your frontage is really beautiful, but your sides are these RV walls, how does that actually make your neighbors feel welcome? And that's what they're staring at. Uh, so I don't have all the answers, and I think this is a big, you know, pivotal year for all of us and how we solve these problems together. Some of the ideas, um, like our camp this year, uh, we're excited about, we're gonna get, uh, 11 foot LED uh, cherry blossom trees and line the sides of our street. They're gorgeous when they're not on and at night they're beautifully lit. Can you imagine if you were driving down the streets in the city and you're seeing all these like beautifully tree lined streets? It'd be gorgeous. Um, another thing was, you know, uh, flags, the sound of a flag. Uh, you know, and giving that height and you're you know, taking your eye somewhere. So these were just a lot of really good ideas and solutions. So um, if you have any ideas or you're looking for solutions, please reach out to us at camp support at burningman.org. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to be able to uh, put this into our resource guide for people to go to for ideas. <sighs> okay, courage. I wanna drop a bone. I'm going to out myself, my camp right now. Um, I've had some really amazingly profound conversations in the last two days uh, that have been very concerning. Uh, under how we're raising our, as we're raising our bar as a community and identifying the issues and giving them names, uh, Friday I got an email. My camp is part of the problem. OSS looks at my camp as a comfort camp that's using too much resources. Uh, what that says to me is I need to level up. I've been coming to Burning Man since 97. This city is near and dear to my heart. 
I had years where I was doing it wrong and I marched into the org with my little rat book and said, hey, I'm part of the problem. I wanna be part of the solution. We need a cultural ambassadorship program. We need a team. Hi, we're now on this, you know, I'm part of a new team, uh, which means I gotta lead by example. I'm gonna be a case study. Are we gonna level up this year and do better? You're damn right. But what I noticed and the conversations that I was having today are a lot of people are scared. They don't have, they don't feel like they have anybody to talk to. And I wanted to say this because somebody said it to me. Um, you're supposed to be here. This is your community too. And the, it's not us versus them. If you feel like you're not safe, if you feel like, oh my God, I think I am a plug and play, what does that really mean? Oh God, I'm a comfort camp. Oh God, what does that mean? Who can I talk to? You're safe, you have an outlet. Please, you can email directly to the camp support at to meet Candy S. I am here as well to help you find the solutions because I too am part of the problem. And I'm not going anywhere, I'm gonna level up. Thank you.